What is up, booktube? It has been a hot minute. Um, today we're going to be talking about Romanoff by Miss Nadine Brandis. And uh, I can't do this over. So we're just going to pour the drink. We're going to talk about this book. Um, just some of the details. This is a historical young adult reimagining. I refuse to call it a retelling because the Grand Duchess Anastasia actually lived, you know. So it's not really a retelling. This isn't Cinderella. She lived. She was murdered. Um, so it's a historical reimagining. And um, when I requested this book, I thought that I was okay with that. Um, this is, let's, let's go through the thought process. Um, I was like, the Fox movie, now Broadway musical that has closed. Um, I'm a fan. I enjoy, I enjoy it. I'm a fan of history. Two of my things coming together. It'll be a grand old time. I request the arc. I get the arc. Over the course of two-ish months, I finish it, right? Uh, so if you haven't heard of this book, it has probably one of my favorite covers of the year. Um, but this is a historical fiction novel that takes the historical figure of Anastasia and her, the royal family of Imperial Russia uh, during the moments... Uh, leading up to their execution. So from their transfer from Tobolsk to Ipatov House at the very end of their lives. So the Russian Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution has already happened. We're in like 1917, I want to say at this point. Um, they have been imprisoned for two-ish years. We are joining them in the middle of all of that. Um, the... I hate seeing people on Goodreads refer to this as like a retelling um, because it's more like a historical reimagining to me because these people actually existed. All of these people are actually dead. They were murdered. Um, it's not like Cinderella. It's not a Snow White. It's not a folk tale that we're just injecting. Like these were actual historical figures um, who lived and died not that long ago, um, just a little over a hundred years ago. There are definitely people alive today who experienced and saw these people existing in this reality. So, just saying, like, referring to it as a retelling to me is a little bit offensive. Um, it introduces magic uh, into this world and this reality, and I don't personally think that that was handled all that well, but I'll get into that in the spoiler section. As for the historical accuracy of the book... Um, I'm not an expert on Russian history, let alone that specific time in Russian history. Um, I just have general knowledge and what I googled after I was done reading and as I was reading the book. And so I have that to go on, but again, not an expert. But I do think that the, the first two thirds of the book are pretty historically accurate. The, f the final third is where we really start to depart and get into um, the more fiction, like the definitively more fictional uh, aspects of the story. And I also think that the final third of the book is the weakest part of the novel. Um, it just was. So that's all I can think. I don't really think I can wholeheartedly recommend people read this. I did not enjoy it but I will have that disclaimer that I think that a lot of it was just the subject matter and how the subject matter was handled was just deeply uncomfortable for me so May 7th it'll be out be able to pick it up it does have a really beautiful cover so I understand the appeal and I do think that just having the dust jacket on your shelf will make you happy um, if I hadn't read it and I hadn't been as upset by it, I don't think it'd be a book that I would be upset having on my shelf just to look pretty. Spoilers! Okay, so the first two-thirds of the book, as I said, um, are pretty historically accurate. So we start with them being transferred from where they were being held at Tobolsk, I believe that's the pronunciation, um, to where they would eventually be executed, um, Ipatov House. Now, 
I knew that just as like a general knowledge situation. Um, in the book, it is not presented to them as this is where they're going to die. It's just we have to relocate you because this is the royal family. Um, there are still people in Russia who are loyal to them, and so they can't just like have them camping out there. Like it's more like that situation, as far as I was concerned. Um, my major complaint with the book uh, is kind of twofold. Um, I think the first two thirds, while his work reacted, are also really boring because it is a lot of the same. Um, it's a lot of eh. It's not really exciting at all. Um, there is a lot, not just in the first two thirds, but there is even in the final third of the book, there's a lot of the suspension of disbelief that didn't really work for me. I thought that they were asking a lot for me to believe that some of these actions were able to, to go down. But most, the, what was most disappointing to me was Anastasia. Because she was written in such a way that was really weird. So at the time of Anastasia's death, she was like 16, 17 years old. Um, might have been older, but definitely around that age. She was a late teenager. And because Romanoff takes the stance we're going to be faithful to the history... It's not like Anastasia where you have like a 10 year old version of the character and then when she comes back to seeing Journey to the Past or whatever, it's a more realized adult version. It's not what's happening here. We're sticking to reality. So she's a teenager, but a lot of how she's viewing her situation is very, um, it's very optimistic, which is fine, but it's also just, I felt very delusional. Like, you're being imprisoned. You were forcibly overthrown. Like, this is not going to be a situation where you get to live out the rest of your life in the Russian countryside, in a village at all. But it was also just like, what kind of logical sense does that make? Like, what kind of logical sense would it make for you to be able to remain alive? <laughs> That's where it was for me personally. Then the story, while the first two thirds are pretty historically accurate, um, and a lot of it is just, again, their day-to-day -day life, um, it introduces a, a romance between Anastasia and one of the guards. Um, at the same time, it has a, a romance between Anastasia's sister. I want to say her name is Maria, but I'm sure that's incorrect. And a different guard. Now, in, her sister's relationship is historically accurate from all of the research I was able to do. Like, people seem to think that Anastasia's sister was in a relationship with one of the Bolshevik guards. The Bolshevik guard was murdered um, before the royal family was. Um, so in my mind, even though Anastasia's the main character, her relationship with the guard is not nearly as fleshed out, as nuanced as her sister's. And so introdu introduce Anastasia having her own love interest in a guard was weird to me. Um, especially because I felt that that dynamic didn't make sense on a romantic level. It was, it just didn't work for me, much like the magic system didn't work. And the magic system is what really sets us apart as a reimagining. It's a, it's our history, but with magic that was interesting, I will say. Um, the magic ink was a different take on things, but I also never really understood the capacity of it. Like, I never understood how it worked. I never understood... Literally anything that had to do with that magic system. So on that level, for me, it was a flop. But I also didn't appreciate that the novel sort of went with this um, premise that the Bolshevik Revolution was predicated on the fact that Rasputin was so close to the royal family. Now, it is true that Rasputin um, had an uneasy relationship with the Romanov family, that there were many people in the Romanov circle who were not a fan of him. They had him killed. Um, everyday Russians might not have liked this man. But I thought that to pin the entire Bolshevik Revolution on Rasputin and not really address the ways in which Nikolai was sort of an ineffectual czar 
for that to be how it happened. Um, but also, there was just a lot of things that were really convenient. A lot of moments in the books, particularly the more action scenes, um, where Anastasia's survival seemed more based on the fact that it was Anastasia and we were doing a reimagining where she didn't get shot dead in the basement and so she was able to survive based for plot needs and not because it was written in a way that was believable for her to survive these situations. I believe that her brother Alexi also suffered from some of the same problems in the book where not where he was written to be emotionally stunted but his entire arc in the book is how sick he is now um Nikolai II I think yeah her daughter was Nikolai II Nikolai was also a hemophiliac but Alexei was a hemophiliac on a completely other level and it sort of sort of explained and explored through the novel but for the first two thirds of the book really he's literally laying in bed because he cannot move because he's literally on the verge of death so like that's where that's where he stays that's where he is he doesn't really get better he kind of puts on a, like a face um for the guards um but he really n is no no better than that for his entire time in the book um but because his bones and our reality are not found in the bottom of the well with the rest of his family they're found a couple like hundred feet away or a couple fa like miles away um him not being in the well has to be a plot point in the book right because we're reimagining it so we have to we have to find a way to get him out of that and I don't think that the narrative decisions um worked I don't think it it made sense especially because we have the known hemophiliac who was already on the verge of death um have like another life or death situation and he somehow survives on pure luck. I also want to say that the love interest in this book I believe is meant to be less European looking Russian and more Asian looking right low so less like I said less European more Asian and I didn't think that the book handled that one well at all but two again it was kind of treated like a reveal and it was just really uncomfortable to read it just it was really it made me uncomfortable to read about it it just it didn't work for me in the context of the book and I might have been reading into it a little bit I don't really know if our love interest was meant to be of Asian descent but I think that it is excuse me I do think that it is heavily implied for that to be the case and if so I do think that it was handled poorly um it just was I don't think it was handled very well at all but again nothing in this book was handled very well at all I thought that the ending of the book was really anticlimactic I can hardly even as I film this recall what happened maybe because I'm a little tipsy but also I just feel like I just know that the the antagonist of the book was also a magician, I want to say, or was also a sorcerer, and he had, like, followed her and to a cabin. There was a cabin in the woods and some really important Russian guy who had, like, disappeared, and there was a fight, and the villain died, and Anastasia lived on. It, again, it was all just very not interesting. I'm going to go now because I don't think this review is going to get any better. In the description, I will leave a link to my written review that I posted back in January. Um, it's a little bit more coherent, and it was written soon after I finished the book. So there are more specifics, or in, and even when I'm being vaguer, I think that it is, at least like I said, more coherent. So I'll leave a link down to that below. If you have read this, I would love to have a discussion with you, so feel free to comment. Come at me on Twitter, whatever you want. This book comes out, I believe I said this, on May 7th. If I haven't, it has literally one of the beautiful, most beautiful covers I think we're going to get this year. So even if you aren't interested in the content and you're just a collector who likes pretty things, I do think that this cover is up your alley. And, you know, it's not going to ruin your life if you read this. Um, so there's that. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you again when I see you. But until then, bye.